All right, and welcome back. You're still with us right here on the hashtag Why in the Morning. Find us on X, Facebook, Instagram, and the rest of the platforms at Y244 channel. Underscore Pali on the grams, and mine personally is at Brahasako 101. Today being total shutdown KE, or total shutdown Kenya, you're delving into matters Gen Zs who are in a renaissance, a movement that's just about to create change for you and I. What are some of the things that Gen Z should be a part of that should actually be forged for when it comes to having conversations on the table? We're just about to delve into that and much more. And first of all, how did this force uh, come into uh, play? And maybe are there any forces, are there any, any triggers that have contributed to these conversations about Gen Z's being part and parcel of this movement? That's what we're going to delve into in just a bit. And I have a panel of very powerful guests from uh, my immediate uh, right is uh, Donald Agwenge. He's, uh, he's a big data specialist and a writer as well. He'll tell us what that means. And then alongside the amazing and the beautiful uh, Vivian Olago. She's a professional model and a nautical marine engineering student. Kariboni sana. Uh, let's get into <laughs> the but <laughs> This is like a podcast. <laughs> so I'll, I'll start off with you, Vivian, maybe. What are some of the things that you picked since this movement started that you're like, nope, akiapo apana? What are some of the things you picked? Especially, I want that cost, because you come from cost, right? Yeah. I want to hear that cost perspective. How are people saying in cost? In cost, you know, like, it's not as big as Nairobi uh -huh. uh, in part of the employment. So most of the youth have dwelled into the content creation part. Right. So immediately we had, we're going to be taxed on content creation. You're like, come on. Yeah. The youth are literally just, they, we don't have jobs like that. So yeah. the only thing we can do is create for ourselves jobs. You know? mm -hmm. So most of the youth have dwelled into the content creation part. And then we're told we're being taxed on the content creation. I'm like, come on. That is now being pity. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. right. So the, that, that was like a, on the youth side, that was right. like a major pointer. Like, yeah, uh, are, are there maybe any maybe any of the clauses that you read that maybe for you personally affect your area of profession that you'd say no, yeah, pana. In as much as uh, yes, people are contesting for it to be rejected. Not even we don't want it amended. They're saying they just want it rejected. Maybe is there any part that you you saw this one affects my career professionally? Okay. As a model. Uh, mm -hmm. I dwell mostly on the beauty part. So also, like, I, I saw we are also, the, the government the, is going to tax on the beauty part. And you know, 38% of the women are yeah. on the employment side. The right. other side, they're not, they are not employed. So most of them have also dwelled on the beauty professional side. And when I saw we are going to be also taxed on the human hair, on the br eyebrows, on the fake lashes, they're like... The nails. Yeah, the nails. <laughs> Why how having a task like, like, how dare yeah. you? Like, so that, that, for me, that was like a major... Yeah, yeah like, it was please don't do right. it. Yeah. Please don't do it, don't yeah. do it. Yes. Uh, let me pick your mindset on this one, uh, Mr. Agongwe, if I'm allowed to call you that. Uh, are there any things that you picked in this bill? That, but then first of all, I, off the air, you told me you support the bill. I don't know if you've changed your mindset on it. <laughs> Please, I'd like you to, first of all, just share freely your insights on the 2024 finance bill. I support the finance bill. Uh -huh. Why? First because the finance bill is what we use to finance our budget. Mm -hmm. So unless you don't support our national budget, then you will not support the bill to finance it. That's one. Then secondly, most of the things people are complaining about are not in that bill. There is a lot of misinformation and disinformation that is th that is uh, fueling this conversation. Especially, what is the misinformation? For example, maybe if I ask, uh, what are the key things you get people complain about mm -hmm. about the bill? Mm -hmm. Just give me one. For example, issue of land that freehold land mm -hmm. will be converted into leasehold of 99 years, mm -hmm. and they'll share a screenshot there that mm -hmm. is like clause 54. Check that bill. It's mm. not there. And many mm. others, yeah. So Which that's are not, that That's just said. one. There's so many. Say, when you say misinformation, <laughs> you should give a PowerPoint. <laughs> Don't just say it and you keep I, quiet. The other one, they're saying that, that's very funny. They're saying that alcohol will be taxed based on the size of the bottle. It's not a fact. Alcohol will be taxed based on alcohol, alcohol content, the volume. 40% high tax. That's another one. 
The third one, they're saying you, they will they, you will be taxed uh, cancer treatment. There will be taxation towards those drugs and such. It's a lie. It's not there. Actually, cancer treatment will almost be free because it will be covered by the Social Health Insurance Fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. The eco levy was among the highly contested. They are taxing even on parts and from importations to locally manufacturing. Eco levy is a very good tax because it, it, you are not taxing Kenyans. You are taxing these uh, Im the, these manufacturers. Mm. But why tax parts? You're taxing these people from Maju. But why For tax example, pads that should be free? Tax are not being taxed huh? in Kenya. Imported mm. pads. Mm. Because of statistics, because of the background. We have like 15 million girls having their periods every month. We have so that's a money-making opportunity. Not money-making opportunity. Not money-making opportunity. But why do we have capacity to make pads here in Kenya. So we are telling people, come make pads here in Kenya. Or let's give uh, uh, advantage to manufacturers locally instead of exporting jobs to Turkey. Ninety percent of our pads come from Turkey. Pads, cotton, we can make them here. So eco levy is actually imposed on manufacturers from abroad, mm. not local manufacturing. But still, it will affect the consumers who are buying and, and consuming. Just to the give pads. the background on this, mm -hmm. you remember in 2022 we had a very big drought. Mm -hmm. Estimates say that we lost around 400 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. Last year we had El Nino rains. Mm -hmm. Juicy to make one of floods. Mm -hmm. All this attributed to climate change. So, so we have to charge eco levy pads. so that these people who pollute the environment must pay for this. By yeah. taxing pads? Not pads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Items manufactured outside there. Uh, what is your reaction on that one? Uh, I would say that's just a banter because um, in Kenya right now, not so many, I can say even 70% find it's just hard to like buy pads. As now I can say the lowest price of pads is like 70%. And right. most of the young, most of the women find it hard to even buy it, you know. Right. And the way he's saying uh, it's an opportunity to manufacture pads in Kenya, you're already taxing it and you don't have any in any company manufacturing pads in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So meaning when you tax it, it will even be hard. Mm -hmm. You know, like as low as it is right now, 70, 70 shillings, a big percentage is finding it hard to even afford it. So yeah. it doesn't make any sense to like tax pad and even just taxing pad in general, you know, yes. mm -hmm. like menstruation is, is not by choice. So that right. is not something to even tax. So mm -hmm. I totally agree. Even the diapers as well. Exactly. There's, there's that point. Mm -hmm. Like generally it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, when, when you look at this uh, outrage that's coming from the female movement as well, that's part of, in fact, they're a big chunk of this movement. What are you learning and what have you observed? And you've mentioned the word misinformation. If you had a chance to clarify, do you think you'd win it? I think the fact is you're putting it that there is taxation on pads. This is a proposal Sh to have that, taxation. Check it on that. No, page. I've already checked. I just want you to clarify. There is no taxation of pads, but there is taxation on imported pads, let's say that. That's right like so. literally taxation on pads. Yeah. Why are condoms free and then pads? pads uh, are, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you win that conversation? That is the question, no, if you were to clarify. <laughs> I will not even delve into that conversation, hmm. because I will not win that conversation. Hmm. Yeah. Then it makes the bill is punitive, right? I don't agree. And then we'll have amendments to these clauses, one by one. Uh -huh. Yeah, the bill has not been passed. It's not a finance act yet. Mm -hmm. So parliament must do their job. Okay, so you want it passed personally for you? Not the whole bill, of course. Uh -huh. Maybe now the, the yeah. clauses that you want amended, specifically for you now that you support it. It seems like you're a master of the bill, Pierre, as you're <laughs> seated here. Uh, you can point out so that the person watching can understand if this movement is going to make that bill amended. I think... So. Um, the amendments I would propose to that bill, myself, personally, is uh, one, I think, uh, this taxation on content creation, because uh, most content creators are young people who are desperate, they don't have jobs, they have gone to school, then you're taxing the little thing they're doing. So I think uh, that taxation, uh, is it 3%? That, that is too high for them. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we should not tax almost everything, but I think that's too high.
Mm -hmm. So I would propose amendments to reduce that mm -hmm. to a reasonable percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And have a threshold. You can't tax somebody maybe who's earning little money like thirty, forty thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because even in income tax there is that peop the people are not taxed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, when it comes to Article 10 of the Kenyan Constitution that provides for the opportunity for public participation, uh, Kenyan netizens have the right to advocate, to give information on matters governance. Whenever a bill has to be passed in Parliament, and you know, uh, it has to go through the Speaker, it's debated, and then finally the President is given to ascend the bill. Uh, he can take, I, know, I don't know, a duration could be even 14 or less days when he can make reservations. But when it comes to this bill, do you, f from your observation, do you feel like, uh, before I get to you in just a bit, do you feel like that pu public participation part was not clear? And as it's enshrined for in the Constitution, every voice matters. And now this has triggered this massive outrage. And then from your observation, I don't know if you, you're reading the body language of young people. They are so enraged and they don't want nothing to do with the bill. So when it comes to public participation from you, now that you support it, how was it done, maybe, if you were to just break it down? I think the article you've mentioned calls for public participation, but I don't believe really Parliament has done enough public participation. Or whether these young people, people are now on the street, have been attending this public participation debate. Because when a bill is before Parliament, they call for proposal for amendment, memorandum. Did anybody write a memorandum to Parliament? Were they considered? That should be the question. Yeah. yeah. That should be the question. Yeah. We be ask them, not them asking us. Because uh, everybody's open to petition parliament to yeah. send a memorandum mm -hmm. to the bill. Mm -hmm. But now I think what's happening is that after the bill has reached a stage, you know, this is not the stage to do public participation. This it's at the committee stage. For for example, at this moment, mm -hmm. that window for public participation. Maybe some people are not even aware that there was a finance bill. Yet mm -hmm. budget making begins way back in November. Mm. In February, you know what will be in the, in, the, in the budget. The budget policy statement is out in February 12th there. Mm -hmm. So I think our people are not really well engaged, especially the young generation, so that they take part in, through public participation during this period. Uh, is it because maybe it was not clearly communicated? Because the, the House has also the, the mandate of communicating and informing the citizen that this is what you should do with this and this and this, instead of using like lobby groups and state agencies. So if they never did that, then it means they exclusively did it using their powers, and then they finally just announced that this is a finance bill and everyone must they do stamp it. On their website mm -hmm. or on the memo board in Parliament, they mm -hmm. call for that. Whenever there is a bill, there is that. But I think maybe our Duration generation... Duration how long? Pardon? Duration before... Once a bill is there, mm -hmm. they call for public participation. The duration for public participation? It uh, depends on the lifespan of a bill. There are some bills you've seen passed within two weeks, the bill is passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then this public participation is segmented. You can do it from the constituency level, county level. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, you send those memorandum to parliament, then they hear all of you. Yeah. They read all those memoranda, and mm -hmm. some people are called to come and explain why you're saying this. Yeah. Manufacturers went there, they presented their memoranda. But also the question is, who yeah. are the voices that they used to formulate this in terms of public participation? Is it possible we have testimony? Or could you say, my apple say, hey, sisindo tulikuja, tukasema, sisindo sautize tunduzili tumika kama public participation. So you guys, as you go on the streets, uh, you, you are not aware. So it is, to is it possible you know, to have testimony of those people, the manufacturers? You know, pu public participation happens where you are called to come and participate. They don't come to you that they force you now. You have to add your voice to So this. it's like targeted public participation, not like open public it's participation. It's open public participation, then invitation why was the to Mama the public. Moga in Kakamega not there to public participate? If you didn't send a memorandum yourself, for example. Then it shows that there's dysfunction and lack of clear communication. Let me jump on to you, Vivian. Um, <laughs> Do you feel from Mombasa, what could have triggered that anger and this massive outrage? Is it because you guys feel like there was no, in, in fact, there was no civic education, like, hey, we are announcing that we have a finance bill, kujeni, kujeni, kujeni. Do you feel like your voices were cut out and maybe there was no clear communication and that something is wrong somewhere and it needs to be addressed even today? Yeah, for that, I feel like 
Mombasa, mostly we felt offended because you can't just be throwing things at us. You have to like anticipate and ask for like our voice, like what do we think? You can't just throw something at us and then you expect us to just take it as it is. Meaning you're not looking at our point of view and that is just unfair. So yes. I think that's why the, the, the public is just angry about yeah. the finance bill. Yeah, but the, and then also I think I was checking out uh, activists also in your in your county. They are now coming out in large numbers. They are even calling on Moha. Uh, <laughs> Moha is he's for, for for which side? Is it Nyali? Yeah, Nyali. Yeah, they want him to give his sentiments. It's like he disappeared. Do you feel like this this movement as well is going to keep some of the leaders not just in cost, even the ones in the highest of the highest position in Czech because for a very long time we've not even seen uh, young people come out to give comments on what they think about the president or even the deputy or even just you know some of these laws that are passed it's usually you would hear it from your parent but this time round it's young people on the ground on time and with their word do you feel like it's a game-changing movement from what you've observed yeah yes it is because you know the youth right now are just uh, like we, we, we are uh, let me say this. The public is angry, mostly for the youth, because when it came out, we didn't even see our leader say anything. You know? And we, are, we, we look at them, like you see the members of parliament, the governor, like we weren't hearing anything from them. You know? So no one was there to talk for us, and we chose you. So yes. we just had to come out. And mostly the youth, the youth we have right now is, we, 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 they, are, uh, they are, let me say, uh, they're educated. The youth right now, they're like very open-minded. Mm -hmm. They're very aware of the situations happening right now. Mm -hmm. So that, and we have, we, we, we are very like, the way I say we are open-minded, we know what's happening. We have to speak out. We are, we are taught how to speak our minds and we're not afraid to like, just say what's needful. Yeah. That's why. Right. Uh, Mr. Gwenge, we saw numbers being leaked and anyone who voted for that bill on a Salemiwa. <laughs> and you support it. I don't know if they'll sell me you, but this is a joke. Yeah. But do you feel like with this web, every leader is going to be accountable for everything he has ever done since he came into office? Now, moving forward, if you mess up, we are coming for you. The Same youths are now coming for you. They're coming for your neck. And yesterday we saw they were even visiting specific constituencies and even the offices and even homes. They want to understand why did you not represent us? Why did you vote yes? I agree with the young people. Actually, I'm the first Gen Z, eh? where that generation begins. And I support that agitation on that point. Not on finance bill, but on the broad issues they're saying. For example, people, leaders to be accountable. Leaders not to be corrupt, flashing money here and there. People who the other day didn't have anything. That I, I agree strongly. And that's the way to go. Leaders must be accountable. We elected them to represent us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they have to represent the people. That's their work. And now they have to be responsible. And if they fail to be responsible, then the young people will come for them. Mm. It's up to them. Are you also going for summer? No. But for uh, you, you can't go because you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you lose I'll be job. going for them in 2027. We'll be going for them. Oh, so this is just an opportunity to... Yeah. And uh, okay. statistically, for example, we are having, every year, we are having one million people graduating to adulthood, to 18 years. Mm -hmm. So just imagine between now, 2022, pre last election, 2027, we'll be live like five, six million mm -hmm. new Gen Zs mm -hmm. going to vote. So mm -hmm. they'll come for these leaders through the ballot. The we will also come for you. See, be see, be We also come for Maybe I'll be vying. See, for uh, I'll be there, but yeah, you guys can also come for me if you why, see. Why me. should they come for me? <laughs> because Yet I'm supporting their agitation. The apart leaders, from yeah. this country, once they go into office, yeah. now look at Moha. Hmm. See, Moha is the agitator of this country. Yes. <laughs> Where is he? You know. So there's just something, anyways. Uh, but also, when it comes to the feedback that we've seen, uh, still on you, Mr. Gwenge, there's been abductions. Why? Is Back abductions on young people who have innocently come up with a movement that's in quest for justice and everybody understands this. Is this, is this a means to scare them off the course? You know, we young people, we are also funny sometimes uh, because uh, these abductions that people, for example, I saw 
Gabriel Oguda saying he has been abducted. The cops are outside my house in the morning. And he's still tweeting up to now. So these young people, maybe some of them throw themselves into this protest so that some people call them to sit down with them, compromise them for their own self, selfish gains. Is that true? Yeah, who has been, how do you prove that someone has been abducted? They've been not been booked anywhere. Then they, they come up in the evening that I'm, f I'm safe. They don't even tell their stories. After that, they go silent. Mm. Follow those three people who are saying, who are we are trending them, free who, free who, free who, free who. Yeah? Where were they booked? So some people are taking advantage of this situation. And actually, the, the demonstration that is going on from an informed perspective is not really about the finance bill. Huh? It's it not really about, about the finance bill. What is it about? It's all bigger than the finance bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I it's love very you to explain that part because it's interesting as well. Yeah. Because this if, is from a If you check, if you check yeah. uh, on Saturday, when the government spokesperson was speaking, or the, when the government, the government's position on Saturday, mm -hmm. they spoke about some things. And if you check this thing well, he said. Why, in fact, quote unquote, he said he feels like it's sponsored by Russians. Is that verifiable now that you work? He didn't in this say office, really it's sponsored by Russians. Yeah. He didn't he, say it's sponsored he say, by he Russians. He said that. But he said, <laughs> this demonstration are being fueled by enemies of Kenya, especially because of the pronunciations the president has made on key issues. For example, the Ukraine-Russia war, mm. the Israel-Palestine, de-dollarization, things like that. And for example, if you say that now you're going to charge Echo Levy on manufacturers of pads, who manufactures pads to this country? Where do pads, most pads to this country come from? Do you know where they come from? Turkey. So do you think if the businessmen there, do you think if you're going to spoil my business, what will I do? Yeah, because if the, the Gen Z were very, very genuine and there was not this infiltration, which I believe the Gen Z were genuine, but people have infiltrated, why manufacture fake things like you will see screenshots of a uh, piece on freehold land, and land is a very sensitive issue in this country. Just suppose your ancestral land, somebody's telling you after 100 years, you have to pay for it. And it is fake, misinformation. Do you think to that extent our, our own Kenyan patriotic young generation would do that? Mm. No. There is, a, there, is a, there is a hand there. Mm. Yeah. Maybe, uh, okay. And that's what I'll tell our young people. Let's uh -huh. not fall prey to an hand that we do not know. Okay. But let's keep our leaders accountable. Uh -huh. Let's ask them to do the right thing that we elect them, th them to do. Uh, so maybe what are, what are, what are uh, the clauses that you personally feel like this one has been blown out of proportion, and maybe you need to just read that part of the finance bill. The land issue, which I've said, then I think there were 16 contentious issues, which myself, they should not have even found themselves in the first proposed finance bill. Mm -hmm. Like the issue of taxation on bread, the issue of motor vehicle levy, all those, eh? but mm -hmm. they were all withdrawn mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People are still complaining about them even after the withdrawal. That's why you ask, is this really about the finance bill? Yes. It's yeah. So it just shows that the finance bill was just part of the wound. Yes, yes, it's a decoy. Uh, maybe you can, do you feel like maybe there's something else? Uh, there is something. It could be from um, accumulated accumulation of previous aggression from other, from the previous regimes. And now this one was just a trigger. I believe. Because of these missing links. Absolutely. Because uh -huh. uh, the 16 contentious issues which were resolved after the the retreat in Ivasha and the PG at State House, which were announced. Those were very, very contentious issues. And everybody, mm -hmm. including myself, I would ask, why would you need to charge me 2.5% motor vehicle levy? Right. Why would you charge VAT on bread, mm -hmm. which we take every morning? Mm -hmm. But now these issues had been withdrawn. Right. But people are still st yeah. demonstrating. So they don't want the bill. So they now, not really the bill. and rejected. If, if I ask you what are the three things that people don't want about the bill, then let yeah, those so be repealed then. Yeah, and parliament will be doing its job tomorrow. Is it today? Mm -hmm. It's today, eh? Mm. Tuesday. What, why can't they delete the bill and maybe introduce it after some time when the temperatures have come down? You cannot because eh, we need a finance act to finance the budget. Mm -hmm. And you know the current finance But I hear even the 2023 one has not been fully implemented yet. Uh, not really fully implemented. It's being implemented, but they're not just uh, getting the target. You know, it comes up with the revenue target. With this finance bill, if it passes to be an act, you'll know that now from this, we are going to raise, KRA is going to collect like 2 trillion shillings. Yeah. Now we are going to, our, our budget is 3.9 trillion. Yeah. 
I think I also say this, if you give me a minute. Huh? We have a budget of 3.9 trillion. Mm. We are taking 1.32 trillion to pay debts to Uru borrowed on our behalf. So you, the young generation so should be asking Uru, why did you borrow <laughs> all this money? We yeah. are paying 1.3. Mm. 1.3 trillion, that's a third of our budget. You in Enda Kulipa then. But also, these state visits, yeah. are, are they they're not equiv equivalent to some of these debts that we have? For example? These foreign visits. How? Are they not? For like example, this recent one, this two, $200 million. Uh, the president clarified that was not $200 million. Yeah. He said it was a donation and it cost only $10 million. Yeah. But and despite that, it. what did he come up back with? For example, if uh, where I come from in Luo Nyanza, I can go visit my aunt with fare of 300 shillings, then they give me kuku, wakupe maindi, ndizi, vitu minge. Will I go complain that I spent fare of 300 shillings? Yet I was given this grant. From the US, what did he come back with? What did he come back with? I, right now, Microsoft. Microsoft is investing 1.3 billion. That's a deal he cut in the United States. The support he gave, the support the United St the President, uh, the grants he got from the visit from the United States was close to one trillion shilling. Yeah. yeah, I think the one people yeah. are happy about is the Express Mombasa to Yeah, you Nairobi. see those things. That one is a good one, yeah. I, I support that one. So Let me come on to you, Vivian, yeah. you'll still pick up from there. Um, if, if you were to maybe have a conversation with some of these leaders from your filter and your understanding about these temperatures you're experiencing right now in the country, what are the things that you love, like Ziku adjusted, and uh, he's mentioned it's not even just about the finance bill. It's because of a, a culmination of, you know, aggression, oppression, even from like two regimes before this one. So this one was just like a trigger to the mental health issues that have been <laughs> underlying uh, the belly of this uh, family. So if you, had a, if you had a chance to maybe interact and explain yourself and just voice some, me mistake he, me mistake he, me mistake he, and this is the reason why. Okay, I feel like, uh, the youth right now, this is a result of free education and we are very much aware about our rights and the government wasn't really prepared for this, I think so. So I think they got, they were caught unaware. So that's why uh, things like abduction are happening and they're trying to scare us, you know. Yeah. So I feel like they, they shouldn't be any amendment. They should just, we are rejecting this bill, like Tolewe yeah. Kabisa. Because mm -hmm. you can't introduce, at least, let me say, you know, they're introducing something whereby they're not even trying to help us in any way, you know. Yeah. There are no jobs for the youths, mm -hmm. you know. And then you bring things like taxes. You're not helping us in any way. In as much as they're saying they're trying to help our country, it doesn't make any sense, right. you know. And then even just oppressing the law, the people who live in low standards, like, that is not fair yes. at all. So I just think there shouldn't be any amendment. And also, they should just um, look on our voices because we are the people and we're the people who chose them. So like um, assuming us, that is absurd. Mm. Yes. Uh, yesterday it was about making courtesy call members of parliament, to courtesy members uh, of parliaments. And uh, <laughs> yeah, there's one, of, there's one of the reactions, but we'll get to that. So today, it's about occupying parliament and the total shutdown Kenya and national strikes and Gen Z's are granting all hardworking Kenyans a day off and parents to keep their children at home and in solidarity. But thank God, uh, children have been, uh, students have been granted half time. Uh, they are actually, most of them, uh, they'll make it maybe tomorrow. But uh, this whole week is seven days of rage. Uh, do you feel like it's going to, to send a message? I mean, it has already sent a message even to individual leaders in, in your county because at this point people are taking it out of proportion. It's like, he didn't do this, here's his number, visit him. We even saw uh, Gloria Roba who had, who had billboards everywhere. It's like, you know, she's a syndicated politician. And mo in fact, most of the cri her critics are ladies who are like, what is she doing for women? Uh, what is that billboard doing there? And a lot of TikTokers jumped on it until there's several that have been deleted. So uh, do you feel like this is asserting authority and it's presenting a signal and, info in, and a message to the leaders that, you know what, you have been messing us up for a very long time and our parents, yes, they are, <laughs> they are rational, but for us, yes, 
the constitution is there it talks about you know he's talked about you know you can go appeal it in fact it's provided for under article 119 of the kenya constitution but nyinyi mesema hapana hatutaki hata your article 119 delete the whole damn bill yeah i feel like it's gonna send a signal if it doesn't then it's gonna be it's not gonna be very peaceful because as i told you we are very woke we are very educated and as a result of free education we know our rights either way we are just gonna like try to like just it's either the government reasoned with us or not you know because yeah. we are the next generation come on yeah. you cannot just oppress us and expect us to just keep quiet right. so i think it's sending a signal and it's either they just listen to us that is mm -hmm. just the only option because yes. they are working for us mm -hmm. we chose them so yeah. there is no nation without the people right yes over the weekend uh we saw the president you know <laughs> before before his initial statement uh, he was like those who want to protest let them go and do it it's their constitutional right and then uh, he emerged with a different tone different body language different personality saying you know what I'm ready for dialogue let's have a conversation but uh the feedback to that is we don't want conversation. Exactly. Delete the bill first and that maybe you can call us when yeah, temperatures have calmed down. Mm -hmm. And then we also saw majority leader that is Kimani Chungwa. Mm -hmm. Initially he said, you know, all Gen Z leaders, <laughs> your work is to come through Obas and you have iPhones and tripods in town, take selfies. And then after that you retreat to KFC to eat your favorite chicken. <laughs> you have no idea about what's going on in the country. And then he emerges with a different statement saying, you know what? The Gen Z's of this country are legendary and <laughs> young people are watching these personalities and their level of intellect and just, you know, like, do you feel like when it comes to now trusting our leaders, now on moving forward, we are going to give it a side eye and yes. be like, you know what, <laughs> yes, you work in that office, but you, you don't deserve my energy. Yeah, I think it's really creating an alarm because tell me why we are here dealing with finance bill and how our youths are going to progress and the only thing you can take from a peaceful demonstration is the fact that youths are going on a demonstration and then eating kfc you don't want me to eat and have energy or what do you mean that is the only thing that's why we're looking at our leaders and we're like you guys are not serious because mm -hmm. instead of looking at what we are, we are we are voicing the only thing it can tell us is having iphones and going to kfc like yeah. doesn't make any sense so yeah. i think there will be there is a very the trust issues uh between the people and and the the our, our leaders because yeah. they're not really taking our voices seriously yes. and as i told you we are very woke and we're gonna fight for our rights yeah and the, those are a lot it was mad with a lot of blanket and salvo so member of parliament Dagoretti south he said <laughs> something about you know he at first, he said, you know, these mandamanos are edited photos online. So yesterday, he emerges again, twisted personality, double personality. He says, I truly apologize for the comments I made regarding my words, huh? uh, regarding the protest and the authenticity of certain images. My words were unnecessary, misguided, and insensitive. I'm sincerely sorry for any provocation I appreciate and I celebrate and courage shown by the young generation in advocating for change. Do you feel like even some of these leaders have no idea this, uh, what about this bill talks about? And uh, there's, there's, uh, I've actually just seen what, uh, you know, you mentioned Gabriel Aguda, and uh, I'll get to that in just a bit. Uh, Karen Yamo, a nominated senator, uh, she was asked to explain what is this bill all about. Uh, apparently, you should get first-hand information from, she is totally green, like she's, <laughs> it's like she's been introduced to Kenya for the very first time, and she's working at it. So do, you, do you feel like some of these leaders, yes, they are, they are talking, but they don't like know. We, we, need, we need to revisit how you got there. Yeah, exactly. I feel, uh, yeah, that is actually a topic which people should really talk about because when they were asked, we were supposed to listen to what do you have to say? And they were very unaware of what, what's happening, you know. And then the, the, the comments they, they, they make, like the way uh, Karen Yamu said, she doesn't use pads, she used tampons. That is yeah. a very sens insensitive comment and very ignorant, you know. Yes. And the way uh, the other is a member of parliament who said um, the groups are initiated by Illuminati. Yes. Like, 
you, it, it just shows how our leaders are very ignorant and most of them are just not unaware. That's why we say our youth right now are very woke and you know our rights and you know what's happening. So meaning the bill when it was being passed, obviously not all, not everybody was involved, you know. It's just something that was thrown at us. Mm -hmm. and that's why we reacted because yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we also had, uh, is it Hanifa? Uh, together with Boniface Mwangi, who are among uh, actually the frontliners who were abducted. And uh, yesterday they issued a statement and said, you know, before this regime came into installation, they vowed with passion. In fact, they had the Bible. They came through the church. In fact, they used the church as a medium of installation into leadership. Wakasema, Tukieka Tubi Bible Chini Pop. Abductions will never be there. Uh, will, the DCI will never ever do again what, you know, they, they said. In fact, most of us even didn't know that the things were reporting Zilekoyo side, but they informed us and told us they were reporters. But then, this is what we are experiencing. In fact, uh, quote unquote, Ben Fosmangi said that exact statement. Why is it you're repeating the things you said? And in fact, in the news highlight that I saw, they played that bunch <laughs> where the president was saying the same, same thing, and then, you know, the abduction story as well. So when you look at the promises that some of these leaders make before they get into office, you know, it was all about Boda Boda, Mamamboga, but then right now it has, it's a different, totally different song. So in short, they don't keep their promises <laughs> and we are doubting them. L let me jump on you, Mr. Agwenge. When you, ex w w when you took note of these uh, events and what is currently happening in the country, do you personally have trust even with the person you're working under in that uh, system? What if he turns and becomes something else? Are you safe? First of all, are you safe? Do you feel you're safe working there? I, I feel I'm safe. Kenya is a safe country. Is it Kenya is a safe country? Am I, I work in a safe working environment? Kenya is a safe country, of course. We are both Kenyans before we are whatever we do. We are all Kenyans. Okay. And I think um, I agree with you, Vivian, especially on the issue of uh, accountability to leaders and people who do not understand. Actually, I believe there are parliamentarians who do, who do not even know what is in that bill. They just vote, they are robots, vote, voting robots. And just like other voters are just voting robots, they just vote people in. They just vote people in. And these people also go there to become robots. Uh, the insensitivity in communication is something that I abhor and I don't agree with. You can't just speak down on people like that, the way the people you've mentioned said. Including so government spokesperson Isaac it did, What did he say? Yeah, you know it. No, I think he gave the best communication that this government ever gave. And I believe after that communication, everybody changed their tone. Whatever you're saying, double personality, I think he gave Q. He did? Yes, he did. When? After he spoke that time, tell me if anybody has said something that is different. There's a lot. People withdrew. Do you want me to get to it? I'm just saying, for example, what the majority leader was saying before Saturday and what he's saying after Saturday is totally different. What does different. that tell you? What do you learn from that kind of brain? I don't want to discuss people's brains in your show. No, it's I not about think brains. You really want it's to not about brains. brains. This is simple conversation. <laughs> you are watching it and seeing it. <laughs> I think what happened is that these people thought this was a joke. That these are jokers, these are TikTokers. But now they have known it's not a joke. These people are coming for you. So if, if you don't do the right thing, the they come. The right? that, that's what I think. You know, even where I work, we have, I'm a young person, we have old people, 50, 60 year olds. They think, we have to do You see, that's what people exactly. think. So you see, he's now admitting. Yeah, exactly. Nice, that now you're I'm talking. Of course, now I have you're to. Talking. My only, <laughs> 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 you know. So are you afraid because if you talk, you lose your job? Exactly. No, I'm not afraid. Even the parkers that, you know, police can't, you know, say I'm anything. They're being paid 10,000, but yet they are busy pushing back on the youth who are advocating for their own damn rights. I'm here because I have the latitude to speak, and I'm speaking my mind without any censorship. Okay. That's why I can say what I agree with and what I do not agree with. Okay. You'll not tell me not to you agree with the You're not protecting people. your job, right? I'm not protecting my job. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm standing with the truth. That's why I'm <laughs> calling out people. You can't just speak to us the way you want. Uh -huh. The Gen Z's have gone to school. I think I first went to school in two or three when free primary education came. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are learned. Then you find people, you have, a, you have, a, you have a, uh, somebody at school dropout to be your boss. Okay. Yeah? 
then you want to do something else, then they are talking to you the way they like. Mm. Nobody accepts that. Mm. That is wrong. Mm. Yes. So the president has called for a conversation. Mm. Which we sh should all attend and have a conversation with him. All right. Yes, <laughs> I'd yes, love yes. to also hear her reactions <laughs> on that one. Uh, he says he wants to have a conversation, but on this other side, the pushback is rejected the bill first, and then after Tumepumzika Rose Mepona, and then Tukuja Sasa Tuonge. So who is going to win, according to your observation? Is it the authority, or the voices of the local Mwanainchi? To win in what sense? No. Like who is going to implement what they've put on the table? Is it our voices to be heard on the table, or the finance bill to be heard on the table? I think we're... Uh constitutional democracy. Mm -hmm. We have institutions. Mm -hmm. And once something becomes law, it is law. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Of course, nobody's forcing. If your MP passes something that you do not agree with, and it becomes law, then you need to blame your MP. Mm. So because uh, so they make laws. <laughs> laws are made in parliament. Yeah. Right? The executive is to implement, uh -huh. and the courts to interpret. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, you see so who to punch. You see who to punch. <laughs> if it's a law, if, if it's a law, for example, in Canada it's legal to smoke, uh -huh. smoke weed. It's not mm -hmm. here. If I go to Canada, I would generously smoke. Mm -hmm. But here I can't because it's the law. Right. But if they would change the law today, maybe Gen Z's would be on the street with the yeah, kila mtu mm -hmm. so, so who do we blame? So the, the lawmakers. Your MP, right. go for your occupy them if you mm -hmm. think there is a problem. But it doesn't make sense right now, yeah, the fact okay. that you n now want to talk about it. Why do you want to talk about it right now, the fact that you're seeing now it's becoming serious? And you want us to listen to it. I think you could have listened to us first, and then you could see like how to go about it. Ma you know? may maybe I ask a question. How long have we had finance bill? Is this the first finance bill in the history of Kenya? Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it? It's not. But that's people on Afikiria, Ruto ndia mekuja na finance bill which is not a fact. It has been there since independence. Mm -hmm. Every time there is, you table a budget, you accompany the finance bill. Finance mm -hmm. bill is how we are going to tax people to get this money, including mm -hmm. the money we are going to borrow. Mm -hmm. It's there. Mm -hmm. Including the, everything is, the national budget, finance bill. It has been there all through. But I, I love that President Ruto has come and people are now starting to have conversation. It began last year. Mm -hmm. And now it's, the conversation continues. And my generation thinks now President Ruto is, uh, is a, a, a PhD, Dr. William Ruto, PhD, a scientist, is now inventing a finance bill and throwing it as, at us. Mm -hmm. Yet this is a procedure that has always been there, but these mm -hmm. people have never known it. Yeah. So what is the problem? What is the he missing? I was reading the start today, the headline, mm -hmm. that security chiefs say this is a communication crisis. Mm -hmm. So I think... Uh, I believe that. I think could be communication crisis. I think it could be. Because you're never clear informed. On People this, are not uh, informed, maybe. Right. It means they never came down yeah. to their... Because now, the what uh -huh. the Cherera 4 used to call... Mm -hmm. What did they used to say? Yeah. Something there. Opaque. Eh? Mm -hmm. This now, I think, it's a communication crisis. People need to be informed. Yeah. People need to participate. And they should not say that young people should not participate because we used to sing, we are the f chosen generation. Yes. And now, it's that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think these all demonstrations and these now puts it into perspective that moving forward, before you do something, what are Gen Z saying? Gen X, millennials, the yeah. old people, what, are, what is everyone saying? Everybody mm -hmm. sits on the table. Right. Yeah. Because uh, for a very long time as well, we've mm -hmm. not experienced such, you know, organized, non-funded, non-politically affiliated, non-religious, non-race, even non-gender. It's everyone, yeah. you know in that, in, in that uh, voice. But also when you look at it, uh, Vivian, from where you come from, do you feel like also maybe uh, he's mentioned uh, communication crisis, people are not making effort to maybe find out like who is my member of parliament if you are to be asked who is your governor, deputy governor, people don't even have that information. And maybe due to you know the system that we have at hand, of course coming from other oppressive systems as well as it has been put out there, People just have a bad perception about any leader who is in governance or in office. And maybe we should try start doing things like civic education. Let's start educating even the old. Let's start educating the young people as early as class one. Let's know that this is my governor. If I have crisis, this is the office I go to. And do you think maybe also the government should also play as a big actor when it comes to installing that into fruition from now on moving forward? I feel like the government should just put um 
should it uh, should I think we should just be serious, you know. They're used to, as I told you, our generation right now is a result of free education. And yeah. we are very woke. We do know our government, our governor, our MP and all this. But then it's just full of greed in, and it's making them be ignorant, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's not sitting well with us. And I, as I told you before, they weren't, they weren't uh, prepared for this. So mm -hmm. I think also just the way we've started it and the way we are creating this motion, mm -hmm. it will make people be aware of their rights. Because we, as you've seen, we, uh, we've been, right now the way you're saying he's introducing something, I feel like it's oppressing us in a way that it wasn't really uh, looked at in major sections. That's why it's really oppressing the people. Yes. You know, and the way I said, it's full of greed. They're only looking at themselves. They're not looking at the common one, ain't she? Yes. Yes. I'm just seeing a reaction here. Sorry, it's logging. Yeah, they're, they're, they're actually giving young people direction on how to go to the streets. They're saying they should walk in groups. Uh, the Law Society of Kenya actually issued out a communique. Let me, let me see if I can get to that in just a bit and point that out to you. They've, given, they've actually issued directive on the things that you should do and not do during uh, the demonstrations. But then there's a hashtag as well that says, stop abducting us. Mm -hmm. uh, this is because as well from the outreach that we continue to see, you know, people just disappear and then they're not telling us the reason why they've you know, taken them away. So they're saying uh, if you will definitely be the loudest in a group from the interpretation here, as voices on the ground, on a Semanga, Saudi, the <laughs> ground things are different. <laughs> They're saying if you be the loudest and you are all alone, you're likely to be, you know, subdued. And now they are terming it now as abduction. And then there's another, free, uh, somebody has posted a meme down there. Somebody says, I'm doing this on behalf of government empl um, a government employee who is tired of Zakayo but can't say anything because Kazi Itaenda. Mm -hmm. There's another one that says, when you, work in, when you work in Gava, you have to act like you don't know anything. So is it? And I asked him, are they protecting their jobs? Is he trying to protect his work environment? He said Kenya is a safe country. But from what you say, even with that meme, do you feel like this is authentic information and people who work there like get keepers? You can't say this. If you say this, you'll be out because you can't, you know, it's like you can't dart where you sit. But then it's an oppressive environment and structure, but you have to subdue and, and just like be on the law. You'll pay me my money, yes, but <laughs> I have to put up with the, yeah, with the suffering. I, I feel like most people are in there for the protecting themselves or protecting their jobs because you've seen results whereby people go against what the government say and you've seen what they, people are being done to. So mm -hmm. I, as I told you, this generation, uh, they know we know our rights, and we're not we're not afraid to speak our minds. You know that is mm -hmm. why we're here. You know, so yes. uh, I feel like the the government should just listen to us because it's it's not gonna be good. Yeah, we yeah. know our rights, and they're gonna fight for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's why they should stop actually the situation whereby they're abducting us. They mm -hmm. should just really listen to us because that's not helping. Yeah. You know, this is the next generation. Yeah. 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 Last week, Tuesday, you, we, we saw a lot of feedback and pushback as well, where there's youths who are charging and forging towards. Of course, the hashtag is Occupy Parliament, but it's like the more they made a, a quarter step ahead, the more they were pushed 10,000 steps behind. And then there's one of the excerpts when this youth is saying, I'm protesting for your right as a policeman. So just let me access parliament and occupy. So in response to that, I'm just seeing an update here. I had not seen it. Uh, so it says President William Ruto has announced new salaries and structures for police starting next month, uh, July, which is just ending actually this Sunday. He was speaking as he handed over the Kenyan flag for, to the first 400 officers headed to Haiti last night. The flight is airborne right now as we speak. So the president also opened the floor for questions and it was a great engagement between police and their president. So do you think maybe these are some of the fruits of you know, this movement? Because uh, I remember there's, there's a viral TikTok video, video as well, where this woman was saying, you know, some of you police officers are pushing and hunting us and you're being used as state machinery, but yet you're being paid 10,000, 15,000. But here we are advocating for your rights and yet you're pushing us back. Yeah. 
So I wouldn't also blame them as much because, as I said, they're doing their job. But in as much as people are doing their job, you should know you're right. That's why I'm saying we're here fighting. It's not only about when the Gen Zs are on the street. We're not only fighting about us. You no. know, we are fighting for the police. We are fighting for the Babamboga. We are fighting for the common mona in Chile. Literally everyone. Because uh -huh. we are being oppressed. And yes. these, uh, th the generation before us, they're so afraid to, like, come out and speak. As mm -hmm. I told you, things have been happening whereby someone comes out and speak and then the next thing you hear, they're no longer there. Yes. You know? So I think our generation is more focused, is more open-minded, and we are not afraid to like, you know, speak our minds yes. because we are fighting for ours. We're the next generation. 2027, you need to see like, uh, yeah. you know, the gen leaders over there who listen to us, actually. Yeah. yeah. As we sum it up, because we have to get to the next uh, conversation. Mr. Gwenge, do you feel like now going forward, 2027, the person who will be the president, they have a lot to do in terms of speaking and coming down here and visiting the voices, engaging, in fact, engagement and communication is going to be number one on the list. Engaging, communication, and also civic education. That's part of communication anyways. Do you feel like they'll have to do a lot? Yeah, I, I believe so. Mm -hmm. uh, we have and it's going to be for the good. We have to change because uh -huh. uh, if you look at the demographics, mm -hmm. we have more young people than the, mm -hmm. than all the people. Our pyramid is like this. Yeah? It's a mm -hmm. triangle. Mm -hmm. So where do we find this? most of these young people? Mm -hmm. You are in Instagram and TikTok. I'm not on TikTok myself, but that's where most of them are there. I remember in our office, we post on Facebook and we post on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And on TikTok, there's a time we had 1.2 million views. Yes. Something we don't get in there what right. we've been using, even in mm. mainstream media, 1.2 million viewership is not something easy to find. Mm -hmm. So everybody who is concerned about the future has to align to the changing trend mm -hmm. in communication to accommodate the young people yes. mm -hmm. and the changing times. Yes. And in 2027, the young people are speaking their voices now. I just wish that when that time comes, they can also go to vote because during voting times, I believe, I don't know if the beautiful lady sitting next to me voted in the last election, but I don't believe we are a bit lazy, too lazy, to even queue to go and vote. No, it's not too vote. lazy. It's because the leaders who are there, they've already shown us enough dust. That's now you <laughs> and should go corruption. there. You should so go you and should vote and speak. The motivation, the conversation was, why yeah. should I vote again yeah. mm. when they did us dirty exactly. last time? Now so that I'm too lazy, now, will I they have vote the this time? Will, yeah. they vote, now, will they vote this time? They'll have to vote this time because yeah. they're, they're tired of the BS. Yeah. So they won't change. So but they'll vote. Did you vote last time? I did not vote because of an assignment elsewhere. That was an unfair question to her then. <laughs> Anyways, I want you guys to give uh, your last sentiments as we hashtag total shutdown KE. Mm -hmm. As we occupy parliament, we pray everything is going to be okay. So I'll start off with you to give your parting shot in, let's say, 30 seconds and 30 seconds and how people can access what you do. But there you are a data specialist. A data specialist. Right, so share very fast in 30 seconds. So to my fellow young Kenyans, we don't need to shut down our own country. We are patriots and we need to put our anger to the right people. Occupy your leaders who are failing you. Occupy their whatever you want to occupy. But we cannot shut down our country, our own country. And as we demonstrate, as we talk about our rights, we have also to respect our constitution and laws. For example, you can't go to protected areas like Parliament and State House and all those other things. That's what I will tell my fellow young people. And when 2027 comes, don't be too lazy to vote this time. Go and put add your voice through the ballot. Yeah. Yes, Vivian, what is your parting shot? First of all, are you heading to the streets from here? Of course he's <laughs> not because he supports the bill. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, you're heading to the streets, right? Yeah. So uh -huh. that was uh, actually one of the major reasons why I came to Mombasa, to support my fellow Gen Zs on uh, rejecting the finance bill. And I would also like to ask the police to stop fighting us and to all just protect us in this peaceful demonstration that you're having. And also another reason, I want just to thank everyone who... Um, who supported me because I, I won an award of the best female model 2024. So I'm wow. so grateful mm -hmm. for um, believing in me and I'm here to stand on your voices. So right. tune in and we are heading to the streets. Yeah, yes. do you have socials? Do you have socials as well? Vivian, yes. you have yours, you can share uh, very fast. My yeah. social media is Olago Vivian in Instagram, TikTok and Facebook. 
Which one are you commonly available on? Where Instagram. People on Insta. Instagram, so, so yes. Find her on Insta very fast. Right yes. now, jump on her social media. At for Explain you. a KE on uh, Twitter. Right. And at Donald Agwenge on all other social media. All other socials. Uh, so, sir, thank you so much thank for you. coming through. Thank you. All right, we take a break, a quick one, and we come back with the next uh, last conversation right here. Still on Matters Finance Bill, right? At Y254 Channel, at Brown Circle 101, everywhere.